What's going on guys, Victor here. I got a giant Kubera snapper head in front of me. Recently, Brooke, Adam and I, for moving weight fishing, took a trip down to the Florida Keys, went fishing with our good buddy, Captain Cody, uh, Joe, and a bunch of other people, and we got two massive Kubera snapper. Now, a fish like this is really special, and it deserves the attention that it deserves. So, instead of just making one video, one catch clean cook, which I'll have that linked below, we're gonna do a giant fish head soup dinner with this guy, including a jaw mount. I've always wanted to do a jaw mount, I've never done one, and this is the first fish that I'm just like beyond stoked to do one with. So these snapper, Kubera snapper, the distinctive feature on these guys is their massive fang-like teeth. They are, I'm pretty sure they're the world's biggest snapper in terms of how big and, and long they get. And these things love to forage on lobster. Lobster, as you guys know, Florida spiny lobster are extremely hard, um, an extremely hard prey for most fish to consume. There's not a lot of fish that eat lobster out there, especially full grown ones. But these Kubera snapper, what we were doing at night is targeting them exclusively on live lobster. That's like their favorite treat. On the August and September full moons, these fish are normally, they're pretty solitary fish. They don't really congregate, but around those full moons, like I mentioned, they spawn. So that's when they're making Kubera babies and they gather in really large groups and it makes it easier for a fisherman to target them. And lobster is like the bait of choice because you weave through all the other fish. And as you guys will see, as this video goes on, when I do the jaw mount and we boil this down, you're gonna see they have even rows of teeth we can't see underneath these big old lips of theirs. Fish head soup, done it a couple times, very easy to make, do not be intimidated by it. And it is a great way to not waste fish. It's flavorful and it's extremely healthy to eat. I know a big comment about this video is gonna be Sigaterra. Are you guys worried about it? Well, eight of us had this Kubera snapper last night for dinner. We're all fine. I'm gonna leave that at that. And just look at the size of these scales on this fish. I mean, the only thing that rivals it is probably a tarpon. Tarpon are known to have really large scales. So to make fish head soup, you gotta clean up the fish head. And we're also gonna use some of the collar because it has a ton of meat. A scaler like this will work, but anything in your kitchen, a dull butter knife, a spoon. The main thing is, is to just run your scaler from the backside of the fish towards the head. And you're gonna see these scales kind of just fly off. But the tool you use really doesn't matter. It's just going against the grain of the scales because scales on any fish run from the tail to the head or from the head to the tail. So we're going against the grain. And I make sure to do everywhere. I mean, even around the peck fins, the collar, the head, the gill plate, because we're trying to extract as much of the muscle from the fish as possible. Because what you guys might see right here is waste. This is not waste. There's gonna be cheek meat, head meat, collar meat. There's just so much um, muscle in between this fish. It's gonna be astounding when you guys see it. So now what we're gonna do is since this fish is so massive, normally I just leave the collar and the head attached, but just to make it easier to work with in a, in a pot, Right here, this is the fish's collar. So the section between the fillet or the body and the head, this kind of triangle piece is the collar where the pec fin is and the ventral fin. So right here, there's kind of like a joint. This is a Dexter Tiger Edge knife. Um, we love using Dexters on the channel. Basically all the fillet knives we use are Dexters and you guys can actually save 20% off. Use my code Landshark linked below to save off all Dexter knives. They're all made in the USA, badass knives. And it's got the serrated edge, which makes it really easy to cut through the joints and bones, which you're going to need. So we're going to just cut over here. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to lift this gill plate up and kind of go right at this, um, right at this joint, right at this corner. Go down. Okay, so there we go. I got the collar detached on that half. Now that we got the collar detached from the top part of the head, it's just attached at the bottom of the throat right here. So I just need to break through there. And there we go. So now I'm just gonna proceed to clean up our head and the collar. Anything that is bloody, anything that's got a membrane, any guts, we're gonna remove. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like after it's done. But just feeling this, that's a solid, there's gonna be two to three pounds of pure filet off of just the collar, not including what's on the head. 
This is what the collars look like after they've been processed. If you guys put together the piece of the puzzle, this is what it looked like. That's what it looks like. That's the top of it. This is the bottom of it. This is where the peck fins inserted. I removed those. Peck fins removed. I, ins I removed those. And I just have a bunch of beautiful Kubera meat. Now, gills are also going to be removed. This is very intuitive. When you're cleaning a fish head, look for the meat, get rid of the scales, get rid of guts, and get rid of any arteries, blood, membrane, and that's all there is to it. So we're gonna get rid of the gills because the gills would give our soup an off-putting taste and you don't want any blood in there. At this point, I'm gonna leave it like this. Well, I'm gonna squirt it out, get rid of all of this clotted up blood, arteries, and then I'll catch you guys in the kitchen and you're gonna see what this guy looks like all cleaned up. Okay, I can promise you guys, this is probably the biggest fish head to ever debut on YouTube as far as fish head soup and the jaw mount. So this is what I mean by all cleaned up. I try to get all the scales off. If you guys look in here, there's no gill plate. There's no organs, there's no guts. Basically any bloody piece I try to remove, any membrane, all that. And then this is the two pieces of the collar. And I mean, this is heavy stuff. So now, if you guys are watching this video for the fish head soup part or the jaw part, it doesn't matter. The same thing is gonna apply to both. Get your fish head cleaned as much as possible. And if you're just gonna do the amount, you don't need to do the, uh, the collar. You don't need to do the fish collar. So this is actually the biggest pot Brick and I own. This is, I believe, a 40 or 42 quart pot made by Cam Chef. I'll have that link below. The same people who make the grill that we're always using outside the woodwind. And it comes with this neat basket, which is gonna be perfect, because I can just take the bones out. Because right now, we're gonna make a broth using the head and collar for our fish head soup as well as take the meat off of the head once it's done to preserve the bones to make our fish mount. So this is gonna go in here. And now what I'm gonna do is fill this up until I just have the head and I have the collar covered because I just wanna make a good stock. So I'm gonna boil this down. So let's fill this up. You don't need to let your fish head and your collar go very long. I did it for like 45 minutes. I brought it up to a boil and I just simmered it it falls off the bone. I mean, just falls off. This is the collar that I'm playing with right now. And you know, if this freaks you out, look, very easy to get rid of. And you just keep the white pieces. This is how much I've gotten already. You guys are gonna be amazed at how much muscle we pull off of the head and collar of this fish. Like, look at this. That's just a solid chunk that you would normally neglect and throw away. It's incredible. Okay, so the pot of boiling water that we use to get our fish stock and as well as make our fish mounts, all I'm doing is, there's a lot of um, still kind of like blood clots and stuff that are floating around, so you want to strain it. You want a nice clear liquid, and this is going to be the base of our fish head soup. So if you guys are ever making a jaw mount, you're already halfway there to your fish head soup. So if you've been intimidated by making a fish head soup, you're gonna kill two birds with one stone. Get yourself a cool jaw mount and make a delicious meal for your family. So in our pot, this is gonna be the foundation of our soup aside from the stock. We got some carrot, celery, onion, two red chili peppers minced. Remove the seeds so it wouldn't be too spicy. Now let's add some garlic. thing that I love about fish head soup is if you look at all the different cultures around the world, every culture does it a little bit differently. So people in the islands and in the Caribbean, they do a lot of okra, scotch bonnet peppers, Thai people might do um, ginger, a lot of coriander. Everyone puts their own little spin on it, but at the end of the day, it's all about the fish, right? 
the fish head and, and the bones, that serves as, as the foundation. It's just kind of neat to see how different people put their own spin on it. And you can put your own spin on it. I'm doing a Slovakian spin tonight. My, um, my family, we grew up eating something called Brinzova Halushki, which translates to like cheesy dumplings. Brinza is a type of cheese. So I made a little potato dumpling batter. Some russet potatoes put through the food processor and you add enough flour so your, so your spoon stays upright somewhat. It doesn't have to stay upright all the way. I got a pot of boiling water here. We're gonna make the dumplings and instead of adding potatoes in there, this is the Slovakian part. We're gonna add our starch in the form of dumplings to our soup. You put your own little spin on it. All right, we're gonna add our fish stock into our pot. Well, it did not go everywhere like I thought it was gonna go. Yeah, same. <laughs> All right, in terms of dry seasonings, you guys have heard me talk about this stuff a lot. This is another part of the Slovakian spin. This is kind of like an all-purpose vegetable uh, flavored seasoning. It's called Vegeta. That's how we pronounce it in Slovak. Um, my family's used it a lot, so I'm gonna add this into here. And it also kind of serves as like the saltiness of the soup, because this stuff is very salty, so I'm not gonna add any additional salt but it's a really good flavoring. I mean, you could put it on chicken. Me and Brooke do like chicken thigh bakes with it. It's very good. And I'm also gonna do a little bit of thyme. Because mine died. Because Brooke's fresh thyme is dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got a pot of almost boiling water. And I don't really know what this is. It kinda looks like a pot lid with holes in it. And this is our batter, the dumpling batter. And we're gonna just spoon it on here don't want to do too many at once. Let's say about a, a cup full. And watch how cool this is. You need something flat. What you do is you take your dough and you press it into those holes and as they fall down into that boiling water, it's gonna cook those dumplings. But you want to push down to make sure you're getting it through. Okay, so we're gonna finish off our soup with some Napa cabbage, just to give it some good texture and crunch. And then we're just gonna heat our fish back through. Since they're nice big pieces, normally I would um, put them into everyone's bowl, but we have so much that I can just let it heat back through and put all that in there. This is what the dumplings look like when they're done, just like little raviolis. They come and float up to the surface, and you just scoop them up. And these are actually really versatile. This is definitely not going to be the first or last time I make them on this channel because they're a perfect little side dish. And one day I'll have to show you guys how to make the brings over halushki like I told you about. Everybody's going to get a little dumpling. A little dumpling in their soup. Some fish, all those good veggies, that broth. This is the soup man right here. This guy's gonna be like five bowls deep in He's 10 minutes. He's the first one in line. You put that on? Yep, I forgot. You gotta finish, finish off. <laughs> finish off a little parsley. The soup man knows the deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is a pretty bowl of soup. He's got the soup man's approval. Oh yeah, look at all that Jeez. fish. Man. Finish off with some parsley. And that's it. That fish head soup, colorful, tasty, and I, I would have to say that my, my bowl had a ton of fish in it, and the fish did taste like a little stronger or different than if you just took a fillet. Not that it was you know, bad in any way, just a different type of flavor, which is what you would expect when you go through so much work to extract the meat out of the head of a fish. You know, why would you think it would be just like the filet that we all just quickly filet and throw the rest away? But that head was, was so massive. And when I got here, Victor had all that meat in a, a glass bowl and it was, it was a huge amount of meat. And it was delicious and tasty. And uh, I'm, I'm glad we didn't waste that. I love the little dumplings. I was thinking when you said dumplings, big, fat, chewy. 
dumpling or something, but they were delicate and so good. Yeah, I really enjoyed this soup. Eating fish head soup, um, it's something that I'm really proud of eating because like they said, it's something that you could easily throw back. A lot of people do when they catch fish and Victor said it was like eight cups of meat out of this fish head. So the fact that not only are we eating something so good, it's something that you helped recycle and not just throw back in the ocean. You, you got to get the full, full value of the fish you caught. Plus, super colorful and flavorful. It's hard to make a meal have this many flavors unless it's in a soup like this with this many ingredients. And the dumplings definitely add a, a cool texture. It's a A plus. Well, I am a first timer with the fish head soup and I must say I am pleasantly surprised. And like Fisher said, don't sleep on using the entire fish. It definitely provides a lot of meat and flavor. Um, and like everybody said, the dumplings were an amazing touch. I loved how they made them. I, like Deb said, I was expecting like these big rolled doughy things and they're just like the perfect addition to fill it out. And it's just, it's a great soup. <laughs> Thanks Emily. You're and welcome. Everybody wish this girl a happy birthday. Yeah. Yes, great birthday dinner guys. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm not gonna talk about the soup anymore because the video is not over. I hope you guys aren't tuning out because we still have to put together the Kubera jaw. But one thing I wanted to say is, uh, you know, we had the Kubera fillets last night and I was talking about respecting food and you know, respecting someone's craft, craft and respecting the fish. There is no more respect you can give a fish than to use every part of it. That is respecting the fish as much as possible. And then even going the extra length to make a jaw mount out of it, it, it humbles you, it reminds you of all the days that you don't go out there and catch something as epic as a Kubera, but. All right, well I followed in Fisher's footsteps and I got a second bowl. It was absolutely delicious. It blew my mind how much head meat was in that fish. I knew it was gonna be a lot, but once you just see it all together, it's just crazy how much meat is in a fish head. And it makes you like, rethink everything that you do and now when you catch a fish you're just like oh i can't wait to eat all the head meat like it seems like such a strange thing you know and it's not a typical thing that a lot of people do a lot of people take off the fillets and i know a lot of people when they see us just do that they get upset and they're like eat the head you need to eat the whole thing and like totally respect that it's mind-blowing how much meat you get out of a fish head and it's such a respect thing for the fish to eat the entire thing and it's so worth it. And it's absolutely delicious. So now the Kubera jaw, which is just six bones, I had sitting for 12, 13 hours in hydrogen peroxide. This was not a very strong hydrogen peroxide solution. It was only 3%. Basically what you get your drugstore or uh, public, something like that. Now we're going to drain it. 3% is really not that strong. It doesn't really burn your skin. So we're gonna drain it. Now, before I soaked it in the hydrogen peroxide, I tried to scrub away any meat, anything that wasn't bone, any joint, any cartilage, tissue, anything that would smell. Because if you leave, like with shark jaws or anything, if you leave any meat on the jaw, it is going to reek up your house. If there's any little bit of tissue left that the hydrogen peroxide did not get, I'm just gonna scrub away with a toothbrush. Jaws are normally pretty yellow. So the hydrogen peroxide bleached it and it turned it a nice white color. And look at those fangs, look at how sick that looks. Those are some big, nasty teeth. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean all of them up. We're gonna rinse them off, let them dry in the sun, and then I'm gonna glue it all together. So we got our jaws all dried up and I'm pretty sure I'm missing a piece to completely do the jaws, but I think I can still make it work. So this is the top, these are the, the top jaws. You guys see those fangs that are sticking down there and it's kind of cool how his fangs are not the same size either. So that is the top and it came in two sections. So this kind of fits perfectly like a puzzle here. You can see that it, it wants to go there and there's one on that side. Now I'm pretty sure when I try to connect them, I'm gonna have to Really be careful because I know that there's another bone that inserts here, but I did not keep it. So what I think I'm gonna do is just try to really super glue it pretty heavy on there and hopefully, hopefully it holds somehow. It's gonna have to hold right there. So um, 
first I'm gonna go ahead and glue these guys on, set up a time lapse, and uh, hopefully this all works out for us. Okay, so I've pieced together most of it, but the problem is this right here, I'm missing that jaw insert. So this should connect to whatever bone goes right there. So I'm only able to connect the bottom jaw to the top by a very thin strand. So I haven't agitated it, super glued it right there, super glued it right there, right there, but I'm kind of worried to see what happens when I try to pick it all up. But yeah, we'll see. All right, so that's pretty much what they look like. And uh, you could do a full skull mount if you wanted to. You could do a partial jaw mount like I wanted. You could do just the four little pieces of the jaws. I wish I didn't throw away the one bottom piece, but that's why I don't really want to pick it up for you guys. I'm trying to let it cure as long as possible, trying to let that super glue really bind to it, and I don't want to agitate it at all. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you guys learned something. Do not sleep on the fish head soup. Wherever you are in the world, you can literally make fish head soup out of almost any fish or a chowder or anything. Highly recommend it and suggest it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch all you guys in that next one.